Today we're speaking with Randy Tinseth, who's VP Marketing at the Boeing Company. Thank you for sitting down with me, Randy. You did a very interesting presentation yesterday that uh, the nice people at ISTAT would not let me record. So it's, it's, <laughs> great, it's great to have you one-on-one. -on -one. For our audience, perhaps you can give us a little bit of uh, your outlook for 2014 for the, the Boeing Company. Well, first of all, Addison, it's a pleasure to talk to you again. It's always uh, great to talk about the market. Yeah, and as I look at 2014, it's, it's shaping up to be a very interesting year, and a, a year of what, what I believe is going to be a very good year for aviation. You know, we've been on a nice string of performance for, for our industry, and we've seen strong orders in the last few years, but there's reason for us to believe that uh, this, is, you, this year is even going to be a little bit better. Uh, for example, the first thing we always look at when we're gauging the market is economic growth in the world. And we're looking at economic growth in 2014 to be around 3.2%. Frankly, we haven't seen this kind of growth in the market since 2011, so that's a good indicator of where we are. The second thing we look at is passenger traffic. And for the last four years now, we've seen actually passenger traffic grow faster than capacity, which means that load factors are up, airplane utilization is up, and those assets are being used as well as they ever have. In fact, uh, load factors, I think last year was at 79.1% of a record high. Uh, when we look at the cargo market, I'd say the cargo market's been a bit more challenged uh, than what we've seen in the passenger market. Frankly, since uh, the market peaked in 2011, trade on a worldwide basis has been stagnant, so it's impacted the cargo business. But over the last six to eight months, we've actually started to see some growth there again, and IATA is now forecasting 4% 4 uh, cargo growth uh, this year, which is a good sign. And then I think it really comes back to, you know, how are our airline customers performing? And this year it looks like a year in terms of record profitability, the fifth year of profitability in a row. Our airlines are managing their business well, they're focusing on efficiency, they're managing their capacity, uh, and they're profitable. I think the final thing when we look at the marketplace is really about asset values. We've seen the leasing market strengthen over the last few years. We're seeing the secondary market stabilize, so that's good. So when you take this good market and you couple it with the large backlog that we have, you know, we've been able to increase our production rates over the last few years. We're going to do that again this year. In fact, if you look at where we were in 2011, we delivered 477 airplanes. Last year, 648 aircraft, so a 35% increase in, uh, in uh, deliveries. And again, we're increasing our rates this year on, um, on 737s, so we're stabilizing our production around the 787. Uh, so we're looking at a good market as we go into the future. So when we look at 2014, should we expect blockbuster orders like we've had in the last couple of years, or do you think the, the, the order splurge is done? Well, I think we're in a good position in the market. I think we have uh, room to go, especially on the 737 MAX and opportunities there. There's opportunities around the 787 and the 47. And uh, as we look at the marketplace, especially on the wide bodies, the 777 side as we're talking about, you know, we've been through this very strange 10-year uh, period. We're just finishing up 10 years where as a result of delays in the A350, A380, and 787, we've actually seen fewer deliveries in the market than the 10 years before that. Mm -hmm. And what that means, a lot of pent-up demand in the marketplace, a lot of retirements coming forward. So I look for wide bodies to have another good year. Okay. Uh, you describe a very interesting situation with high load factors. And given the fact that there is a lot of talk at ISTAT this year about a, a an excessive demand for pilots compared to the supply of pilots, mm -hmm. we don't want to use the word shortage but there's clearly there's a great demand for pilots that are not being met. It's a, does this upgrade, does this mean airlines need to upgrade? Well, I think that what, what we see is especially impacting the regional market because a lot of those pilots are in that regional market. You know, there's been some changes in the rules mm -hmm. about pilot experience and flying on those aircraft. You know, some of, I was talking to one of the regional guys uh, a couple of days ago and he said, hey, you know, not only do I have a shortage of pilots, I'm having to pay my pilots more. Um, because they're just harder to find. I think what we're going to find on the, the mainline carriers, I don't think that there's been so much an issue of, 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 of a shortage there. But what I think we look at long term is, are the things in place to make sure that we have that flow of pilots with these new regulations? So what we're doing at Boeing is, number one, is we're working hard to identify where those challenges may be in the market in terms of geographic area. We're partnering with regulatory authorities, uh, flying schools, uh, universities, 
putting our own training facilities in possible to make sure that what we think might be a challenge in the future, we address it today, mm -hmm. not then. How about the, the point about upgaging where airlines are saying, you know what, just for the, the, the sake of capacity constraint and management, we just need to go to big, long, larger airplanes? I think the issue there has been more about efficiency, I think, than a pilot issue. You know, airlines figured out a few years ago that the more people I put on an airplane, uh, the lower my cost per seat. Mm -hmm. And so we have seen a situation in the marketplace where for example, 737-700 used to be the heart of the 37 market, and that's moved to now uh, to the 800, and I think over time we'll see more and more 737-900 ERs or the MAX 9 in the future go mm -hmm. up. And that's really been, I think, primarily issue of, of efficiency and lowering operating cost. Now, I think there is some element of capacity constraints in the market mm -hmm. and challenges around airport capacities. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, people forget about it. You know, our competition talks about everybody having to fly on these really big airplanes to address congestion. But the fact is 90% of the flights are with small airplanes. And so if you really want to address congestion, you address it by upgaging in the smaller market. So I right. think that that plays a little bit of the role, but I think the bigger part of the push has been around efficiency. Any other things that you could share with us uh, around your, your, your view of where the industry is going, going well, this year? I think it's a very exciting time in 2014. You know, we're looking at a more robust economic picture today. We're looking at airlines being profitable. But when you're in a good place, you also have to make sure that you're watching very carefully what challenges you may have. So the things that we're watching very carefully today are the issues around currencies and some of our market. We're making sure that some of the developing and emerging economies, their economies continue to grow in a way we expect them to grow. We're looking, of course, at the geopolitical situation uh, in places around the world. And then finally, we're looking at capacity. So, you know, we, we talked about the growth we've seen over the last four years in the market, the passenger traffic growth. This year, we're expecting 6% growth. But what we want to make sure as the market grows, that the yields and revenue come along with that, that those things aren't being dampened because mm -hmm. of the dramatic growth we see this year. So we're going to watch that capacity where it goes and how it's performing very closely. Last question. What should we be thinking about for Fonbra? Oh, you know, that, that's in July. <laughs> Last I looked, it was in March. Well, I think as we look at Farnborough, I mean, uh, as I look at any year show, there's a reason why we go. We go to connect with our customers. We go to sit down and work with our suppliers. And then it's a show. We're bringing, we bring our airplanes there, we want to demonstrate the features and capabilities of those aircraft, we want to talk about what's going well in the marketplace, so, you know, all I can say is just stay tuned, we'll see what happens, but I expect a great air show. Thank you.